Hello and welcome. So uh, sorry, I'm a little bit late. A few technical problems to get sorted. So finally, I'm just um, trying to go live um, directly just on Facebook. So uh, if you're there, then uh, do do send me a little a little hello or a little a little shout out. That would be brilliant so that I can see that it's working. Um, my connection it says it's not great. So let's see let's see how we get on. Okay, well welcome. It's so great to be back with you after the after the holidays. Um, for those of you who haven't seen me before, there's a few new people in the group. I'm Anne Collins and I am the founder and the CEO of Blue Bottle Coaching and I'm a leadership coach. So today is our Tuesday Zoom. So it's a regular Tuesday evening session and each week I take a theme. I try to try to take something that seems to have um, been been a question that's come up from, from, other, from other clients, from just talking to other people in the group and uh, or it's or it might seem that it's particularly pertinent for the moment so today's is all about the power of visualization and this follows on very much from the the mini podcast that I did on Sunday evening which you may well have, have found in the in the feed if you're new if not just uh, scroll down and you you should you should come across it or go to the podcast leaders who love what they do and you'll find it there under bonus Okay, so today let's crack on and uh, we're first of all thinking about um, what questions do you have about visualization for leadership? Maybe you've you've thought of using visualization for sport or for music. Um, so why why uh, why else have you used it? Oh, it's great to see some people there. Hello, Anna. Hello, Dermot. And it is working. Hooray. That's wonderful. So do let me know in the chat if you have any questions about visualization, because I'd be really interested interested to know and I will do my best to answer them and if I can't answer them I'll get back to you. So tonight's uh, tonight's little presentation is going to be in five different parts. So the first one is all about the the different phases that we need to use to actually use visualization because in fact when we say visualization that's just the start. So we're going to talk about that as a whole process. Then I'm going to touch on how to use visualization for your goals and also how that relates to vision generally and what the difference is. Also how we can use it to improve team performance and change management. I'll be touching very lightly on these things so if you are interested we can always come back to it. The third section is all about the link between thoughts and actions or mind and body. So I think this is this is really the heart of what coaching is all about so I'm going to try to explain a little bit about that to you. Then I'm going to offer you some possible uses where you could use it in your in your work. And I know at this particular time with a new lockdown, there there are pot potentially other other ways you could use it right now to, to help in this particularly difficult and stressful time. And then finally, there'll be a little top tip, which I hope I remember because uh, it's my favorite one. So I hope I, uh, I remember that. I'll just put that to the side so I can come back to it. So if you have ever used visualization as a technique for your work, what kind of results did you get? Have you tried it? Have you tried it um, in, your, in your work life, in, in another area of your life? So please do let me know in the chat if you have. Okay, so why talk about visualization? Well, very simply because it works. Honestly, it works. I've seen it work on myself. Four months ago, I visualized blue bottle coaching as it is now. And now, and I've redone the exercise for looking ahead to June because it's quite a new venture for me. My The, the periods have been quite short because I don't really know how things are going to work out. So the visualization for me is, is, is more short term. So do depending on where you are, where you're at, it might be short term or longer term. So see what suits you. So what is the key to success? I really think the key to success is having absolute clarity around the vision. If it's too woolly, too vague, it, it, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't, it doesn't really get the mind and get the brain working in the way that we need it to in order to get some action and therefore the results at the end. Secondly, I think there needs to be really a commitment to the whole process. So visualization, as I just said before, is really just the start. 
So it's it's the tip of the iceberg, really, because that part forming the image in your mind, that bit, in a sense, is the is the easy bit. So forming the image in your mind of the outcome that you want, that's really the first step. And many people stop here and then wonder why it doesn't work. And of course, forming the image, well, we have to, we need to do some follow up because if we have that image already, it, it's not just going to magically transform. So the first one, the first step forming the vision itself is, is also related to allowing yourself to think the impossible. And this is something that I think is very, very powerful. When we give ourselves permission to think the impossible, to dream the impossible, and that might sound a bit airy-fairy, it's, it really isn't. All it means is just opening, opening, that, opening that boundary fence in a sense. You imagine that you have a, a boundary around you. When you start to dream the impossible or think the impossible, we start to extend those boundaries. We start moving into to another zone. Ah, oh, yes, that could be possible. That could be possible. Start looking at the possibilities first and then through the vision, really start to think, oh, yes, I could actually get there. So this is really a, a very exciting part of it. So once you have that vision, once you have dreamt the impossible, what next? So then step two is perhaps the most important, I would argue, and this is about believing it. And of course, this is where this is where the, to, we, we get stuck because we think, well, yeah, that's all very nice. But, well, I can't do that. That's not for me. That's that's great. But that's that's not for me. And we start getting stuck by limiting beliefs, by by seeing the world as we've always seen it. So this is where the coaching really starts to come in and starts to work its magic because firstly we need to identify what those beliefs are that are stopping us from pushing out that boundary, from looking over the fence that we've always believed is stuck, is there because it always has been before. And so this is where the coaching that, uh, that we can do by asking questions, by really thinking about well, what is it that's stopping us from stepping over that boundary, of opening that gate towards a different a different world a new world a new us then the second thing is to replace those those beliefs that are not helpful with something that is helpful so for example a qu uh, something that comes up often is somebody will say well that's not something I could do so we need to first of all question well well why why is it why are you saying that where is that where is that coming but we're not going to dwell on that too much because coaching we stay in the present really and we're looking towards the future but we need to first of all have a think about what what that is really where what are we thinking what are, what is uh, what is inside our heads that's uh, that's going around in circles that's telling us what is the belief behind that that's stopping us from moving forward so once we've done that work, and that can be quite intense and can take quite a while, the next step is actually planning out the action. What is realistic where we are now and what is going to work and what can we do first? So the planning part, the action and the doing. Again, without this step, nothing will change. So all of these steps are just as important as any, as, as any other. Finally, step four, which I think is a very interesting one and one that, uh, that I think people often miss, is actually accepting our successes. So accepting, wow, I've done that. I've really done that. That means I have changed. I have done something new. I have taken that step outside of that little boundary. And accepting that and integrating that and seeing, well, that's, that is me now. That's me. I am that person who can do that. Now, why is that important? Well, I think it's very important because then it means the next time it's so much easier. So we need to integrate our successes. It's very easy to think, OK, well, what's the next thing? And to move on quickly. But let's integrate our successes. Let's be, let's be happy for those things. Let's think, well, how did I do that? What were the strengths that I used? How can I maximize those for the next time? So visualization, let's go back over that again. There are just four steps. So the first one is having the image, having the vision in the first place. The second one is working out what's stopping us from getting there already. What are those beliefs? Then working on those and replacing them with something that's really useful. The third one is the action. 
And as I said, nothing will change without the action and big action and consistent action. And finally, integrating our successes. Let's acknowledge where we've come from. Look back and see, oh yeah, I, I, I really, I've, I've made progress. I've come forward. I've changed that belief. And that's what I've been able to do. So that, I would say, is a, is a little introduction to, to, to my view of visualization. Now, many people then say, well, visualization, that's, a, that's a really great, but what, we, what can we use it for in, in practice? Um, and I think that we, we quite often make a big mistake with this because we start using visualization just for goals rather than vision. And of course, the clue is in the name. And so what, what is the difference? And this, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm guilty of this myself, of using them very interchangeably. But when I think about it more carefully, for me, really, goals are outcomes or markers. And vision is really the long term picture of the impact that you want to have. So let me give you an example. So a goal for me at the moment might be the number of clients I see in a month, for example. But the vision is, is not at all that. My vision is to provide the best leadership program, the best leadership coaching program that I can, and also to support educational projects in developing countries. Those are my two, those are my two aspects of the vision that I have. So they are not really the same. And if you and if we really focus on the vision, how much powerful that how much more powerful that can be in the end. So imagine the power of that when we start looking at how we can improve team performance and change management. Now, those, both of those things are, can be very, very difficult, and I'm not going to go into all of the, the possible problems with that. But imagine what happens when a team truly comes together and not only shares goals and objectives, but truly shares the vision of where they want to go truly has built that vision together and has shaped it and, and based their own goals on it. Imagine how powerful that is when all of that is aligned. And that's what we're really talking about here. Because leaders who can coach their teams can do that. And yes, it takes time, but imagine the results. Suddenly, decisions are easy because we know what the vision is. If we know what the vision is, we know what the right decision is. Suddenly, the, the leader doesn't necessarily need to be there all the time. The team know where to go. They know what the next step needs to be because they understand they've integrated the vision. They've constructed the vision. So I think this is really exciting. And, uh, you know, leaders who can coach are becoming very much sought after. And, and those of you who follow me on LinkedIn, you'll, you'll have seen today that I, I posted an article that I just came across today about the skills that are going to be required in the future. And one of the key skills that came out in this study was that people want leaders who can coach. And I think they didn't say in the article, but I would imagine that this is a key area for them. Because if we can get people really aligned around a vision, then things really can start to move. About change management, this can be very tricky, can't it? And there's, there's again, there's lots of reasons why. And there's lots of different solutions. And I'm not suggesting that visualization is the only one, not by any means. But I do think that working together on a vision of that change can be enormously helpful. It might not solve all the problems, but I would suggest it's certainly uh, a place to start if you're wondering um, where, to, where to start your next project that involves a lot of change. So how does all of this work? Well, fundamentally, this is all about the link between our thoughts and our actions. And this is at the heart of NLP that, uh, that I studied um, with Anna as well, who's there. And it's also about the link between mind and body. So what we're thinking uh, really directly affects our actions. So if those beliefs are in place, if we believe that we can achieve that vision, then we've got a good chance of really doing it. 
So if you think about visualization in sports, that's been around a long time, and I think must be at least the 70s, if not if not before. And uh, you know, there's a, there's a famous golfer. I can't remember his name, but a famous golfer who famously said that he never hit a shot without having a very clear picture of it in his head. And this same technique is used by musicians, by actors and even teachers. I have to say, for me as a student teacher, I learnt very early on from a mentor to visualise my entire lesson and to spend just two two minutes before a lesson if possible and because that's not always possible as a teacher or at least in the morning to spend that time visualising the entire lesson. And that is so powerful because you you can start to visualize not only the practical the practical side which is it which is very useful as well the transitions how how you're going to organize what could go wrong how what are the contingency plans so the practical side but you can also start to visionize vision really the outcome the quality of the work that's going to come the quality of the learning that the children are going to get during that lesson and then it becomes so much easier during the lesson as well to be flexible and I think it's exactly the same when we're in any leadership role that we can be more flexible and actually that's what it's all about strangely we've got this vision but at the same time we don't have to go in a straight line we can we can meander around but if that vision is clear we know what the right decision is probably going to be now, why in these examples is it easy? So for the sports, for the sports player, the teacher, this kind of visualization is quick and it's easy. And I think one of the reasons why is that that belief work has already been done. They already believe that they can do it. Teachers, they've they've already they've been trained. They're ready to go. The sp- people who are in whatever level of sports, they they know what they're doing, so they're able to use it. And so I think that's why the, when the belief work is done, it becomes comes easy. If that belief work still needs to be done, then let's make time for it because it's it's really important. Another thing that people come up, come up against sometimes is they say, but what can we do when we when we want to imagine, but we can't? And this is, a, I think this is an interesting, this is an interesting one because it can, I think it can come from many reasons. But I think the key often is, is if we come back to this idea of a boundary, because if we can't imagine the impossible, then we can get a bit stuck. So we need to give ourselves permission to, to think big, to dream that impossible and to write it all down or to, to say it out loud, but record it in some way so that you can start to just push the boundaries. So that's the first thing. The second thing, I think, is to really leave aside the question of how. I was talking to someone recently and she said to me, well, Yes, I've got lots of ideas, but, you know, I can't put them down because I don't know how I'm going to do it. And as soon as I said to her, well, leave the how. Don't worry about the how. The how is is going to be the easy part, actually. So let's leave that to one side and let's look at what you actually want to do. And as soon as she did that, the list flowed. It was amazing. She wrote almost one side of A4 in in 15 minutes maybe it was quick it was easy she was suddenly free to write down her vision of the future and actually after that the how was indeed fairly easy so it's uh, it's an interesting way i think to to get started the next thing to do the third point there is to really imagine the future where you have already achieved your goal and to do this one of the ways that we're, we're taught in in coaching and NLP in particular is to focus on the senses on the five senses so you imagine yourself in that position and you imagine what you can see what you're hearing so in when you're in that position maybe that maybe that goal or that vision is that you you speak another language fluently that you're going to use at work so you imagine Imagine yourself walking around, uh, walking around the room in a, at a conference, an international conference, and you're speaking in the, in this language easily. You're 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 seeing the reaction on other people's faces. They're happy to talk to you, whatever it is. So think about what you can see, what you can hear, even how you feel, how your how your body is reacting. Are your shoulders up? Are they down? Are they relaxed? Are you smiling? Are you are you happy to be there? 
What is it? What's the difference? And when you start to imagine that, that vision becomes crystal clear. And that's what we need. We need clarity, absolute clarity. So spend some time, spend some time really focusing on what it feels like, what it's, uh, how it changes um, your, your presence, your place in the world at that particular moment. Finally, on that list, I would say you need to repeat it often. So repeat thinking about that vision, repeat living that vision in a sense. People do this in many ways. You might like to meditate, you might like to write about it, you might like to just have a visual reminder, you might want to even, some people like to cut out pictures and, uh, and keep it and, and do it like that. There's, there are lots of different ways that you can, that you can make yourself uh, a little reminder so that you can keep it at the forefront of your mind. I have a very nice quote from Muhammad Ali and he says, if my mind can conceive it and my heart can believe it, then I can achieve it. And this is going back to the earlier point of believing that you can do it. So working on that belief, re internalizing that and, and working, out, working out what it is that you need in order to get to that point where you believe that you can actually do this. So for daily training, we've talked a little bit about using visual reminders. I'd just like to just mention um, something that I found recently that looks very interesting. And it's called the Six Phase Meditation by Vishen Lakhiani. And he is often recommended and he's, uh, he's part of an organization or is the founder of Mind Valley, which you can, you can find very easily on, uh, on Facebook and Instagram. He's, he's quite present there. And he's got a program all around using daily meditation meditation and although he focuses on other themes as well such as compassion and forgiveness and gratitude which I think all feed into this as well at the heart of it he's he's encouraging us to envision the future and then envision the day ahead and this seems to be a very interesting way to build build in this this idea of visualization into your daily routine so it's certainly on my list of things that I'd like to try in 2021 I haven't tried it if any of you've tried it do do let me know in the comments. I'd really like to hear about that. So I'd like to investigate that. And uh, I, I think that this, that this could be a very interesting and useful route if meditation is something that you, that you like to do. So how else can we use all of this uh, in, our, in our daily lives, both at work and at home? Well, clearly for stress management, it's, it's going to be useful. Thinking about how, how you could operate in a different way, what that would look like. So visualizing that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a moment in time. It can be a state. It can be your, how you're feeling in that particular moment. So stress management can, can, be, uh, can, can uh, really make use of visualization. Time management as well in the same way. Career development, if you're thinking about moving on in your career, it's again incredibly useful to imagine and to vision really where you're going, what you want to be doing in, in great clarity. I think leading in a crisis is also a time when we can use visualization. So now in the pandemic, and, and I think the only certainty at the moment is uncertainty, and having a clear vision of your day, even if you can't look for more, more forward than that, having a clear vision of your day it might help just to be to be calmer and to be therefore more productive and and to feel more relaxed and and therefore better about the day so i think in times of crisis as now i think visualization still has a place but of course when we're in a time of crisis it's quite difficult sometimes to find to find that calmness to find that stillness in order to plug back in to that visualization 
And I think one of the reasons why it's difficult is that visualization works hand in hand with having a growth mindset. And unfortunately, a growth mindset is wonderful, but it does tend to let us down when we're, we were in a little bit of a crisis and when we're stressed and when things are not going as we expected. We tend to default into wanting things to be rigid and not being able to be as flexible and not being able to perhaps cope with things when they're not going well. When we want to reset that, I think a useful place to start is really thinking about failure and thinking how we can embrace failure. As we talked about um, just before Christmas, we did, we, there's a Zoom on growth mindset if you want to go back and look at that. So embracing failure is one way to, to reset that quite quickly, to see that actually failure, problems, errors, mistakes, well, for a start, we can't control all of that. And secondly, what a learning opportunity this is. In times of uncertainty, we're in that zone where we can really learn the most, that zone where we don't know what's around us and nobody else does either. And that's where there are opportunities for us to learn, to develop and maybe develop develop other skills that we didn't even know we had. So if we can click back into that and then settle into our visualization and think about our day ahead, I, I suggest that that's, that's maybe a way forward if you can find 10 minutes in the morning before, before getting on with all the things that you're going to be doing now with homeschooling and everything else. I do have a word of warning about all of this, about visualization, because we need to watch out that we're not rehearsing negative outcomes. And you might think, well, of course, that's obvious. But in fact, we need to be careful because we don't we don't do it consciously. We might be thinking, well, I'll never be able to do that. And just in that moment, we've rehearsed it. So we need to be very aware of that and just stop ourselves. Watch your thoughts. And this is something that we learnt over and over again in our coaching training, that watching your thoughts is the first step. Because after that, if we watch our thoughts, then we watch our action because thoughts guide action. And your action changes your world and makes you who you are. So watch those negative thoughts and don't rehearse them. We don't need to rehearse them. And finally, I'd like you to remember just how truly remarkable and powerful your mind is. So let's allow it to do its best. Allow your team also to use the power of their mind, to develop their visions and to construct visions together. Decisions will be easier. Decisions will be more aligned and more powerful. And I, I really think that this is, uh, this is an area that's worth exploring. It's not going to be something that's, that's perfect the first time round because it, it takes practice. But I think it's worth exploring and I would urge you to, to have a little go at it. OK, so just to finish there, I'd just like to say a quick word about uh, the next Zoom. So the next Zoom is next Tuesday evening. Um, again, at, at this time, we'll, I'll do a little bit of a, uh, a question about whether this time is better. Um, I moved it to a later, a later time in response to people who said that it was too early and interfered with bedtimes. But I'm wondering whether now we're too late. So let's uh, do let me know and I, and I will see. I'm happy to adapt or go halfway even, so we can look at that. The Love to Lead Leadership Development Programme is, is starting this week, so I'm absolutely delighted about that, very excited. And the next cohort will be starting towards the end of February. So if that is of interest to you, do get in touch and I would be very, very happy to see you. So finally, my top tip, which I said that I would try not to forget, and I haven't, it's here. So my top tip for you is to act as if, and that by that I mean act as if that you have already achieved your vision. Put yourself into that position. And in fact, we're going to come back to that because to me, that's, it's a, an extremely interesting part of the process about this gap between our identity, our identity now and the identity of where we need to be to, to realise that vision. So act as if, put ourselves into that role, let, allow ourselves to be in that position. So any questions in the in the chat there? 
Oh, lovely to see you, Emma. Thank you. Well, it's great to have a few people there. Lovely. So it's just, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you about this. Um, I'll just... Uh, just wait if there's anything coming in, any questions at all. Otherwise, if you're listening to this on the replay, do just leave a question and I will come back in and I will have a look. So thank you all very much. I wish you a very good evening and I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday evening. Bye bye.